What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Realistic Career Mode, it's episode number 13, uh, returning today with the penultimate episode of season 2, we're going to play most of our final 8 Premier League games, and to get back in a European spot as we're officially in squeaky bum time, and we'll have the FA Cup semi-final uh, against Chelsea as well, so yeah, loads to get through today, and we're starting off with Luton Town away at Kenilworth Road, but we're going to tell you what I'm needing a miracle in order to survive, Rob Edward Tatters, our first game today, I'm not sure if anyone caught the... Uh, Bournemouth looting game uh, last Wednesday at the Vitality. I was keeping an eye on it. I was, I was watching the Champions League though, uh, but I was, I was keeping an eye on it. And when I saw Luton were three 0 up at the Vitality, I was like, "Oh my goodness, what a win that's going to be for Rob Edwards." So I didn't really, I didn't really feel the need to to look at the scores in the second half. I just assumed they would close out the win. When I saw the full time score, it was one of those moments where I was like, "Huh? That can't be right." Like I must have missed seeing that. No. One of the great Premier League comebacks of all time. From from 3-0 down, Bournemouth in the second half won 4-3. Incredible, incredible comeback from the Cherries. And, well, a massive missed opportunity from Rob Edwards' side. Obviously, they got that massive point uh, away. Was it against Crystal Palace uh, on, uh, on last weekend? And then to be 3-0 up in an away game at half-time and lose it 4-3... Well, I'll put it this way, th th those can be the, the losses that kind of confirm, not not confirm relegation, but you'll look back on it if you do go down and say, oh, we let that slip through our fingers, man. We let that slip through our fingers, and that win would have been massive, uh, as I think it would have taken them out of the relegation zone at that point as well. Um, then they're not down yet, but that would have been a huge win. For Bournemouth, though, that's, uh, that's them safe for another year, no doubt. Is Fafana makes it. Oh no, it doesn't make it 1 1. Off the crossbar. Woodrow takes a tumble. Shot deflected off Kirkes and behind for a corner. Lightning quick start at Kenilworth Road. Uh, lost to Spurs. Ended our, uh, our nice little unbeaten streak. But it's definitely a game where I'm uh, very disappointed we can't win this one. To be fair to, to Luton, I mean, obviously survived in season one in this save. But they're rock bottom right now. And. They're, they're looking all bit down already, man. Seriously, I always feel there's one team. I don't know if you guys find this experience the same as me, but I always find there's one team in the Premier League in a season that always ends up finishing rock bottom. And I mean well off the, uh, the safety places. And Luton Town, unfortunately, this season have been that team. I'll always have a soft spot for the Hatters after the career mode, the, uh, the start of FC24. But times to move on, things change, and, and right now it's Bournemouth looking for a big win against Luton once again. Just like we saw last week in real life. So second half off and underway, still leading by two. Uh, we've got one more game before that FA Cup semi-final against Chelsea at Wembley. Where we're underdogs for it, don't get me wrong. But if we can go into it on back-to-back -back wins and only one loss in, I think that'll be eight games. That'll be a really good run of form heading into that clash in the capital. And I would say whoever wins that game between us and Chelsea is going to go on to win the uh, the final because the other semi-final tie is an all-championship affair. Burnley who were relegated last season in the save and the Hornets as well. So, yes, yeah, Dan Neal gets his first in a Bournemouth shirt. You'd love to see that. I would say whoever, whoever wins that semi is going to go on to win the whole thing. So we've got a golden chance at the first major honour in club history. But we've got to come through the favourites, Chelsea. But in, in this run of form, yes, the loss to Spurs was poor. But other than that, we've been on a really good unbeaten stretch, apart from that defeat in North London. Dan's first makes it free. Bournemouth running away with this and putting a statement out of Chelsea. Caught to the middle. Oh, has that gone in? It has indeed. Tyler Adams with the acrobatic clearance. But in the end... Ref gets a, uh, a buzzer on his watch to signify it has crossed the line. I thought he did brilliantly well. No, it's definitely crossed the line. For a second, I thought Adams leaning back did enough to get it off the line. But don't don't often see the goal decision system nowadays. But uh, it had just about crossed the line when the American heads it away. Right decision, clean cheek gone, but Winston in the bag. I would love to see for moments like that where it's a uh, did it or didn't it cross the line. You know, play play continuing because as soon as the ball crosses the line by a split second as Traore restores the free goal cushion, the celebration starts and the play stops. But obviously, as we know, when it's so tight, the play the play tends to continue for about four, five, six, seven seconds before the referee eventually gets the notification on his watch and then uh, and blows and, and, and points to the, the centre spot. I'd love to see that for the realism, you know. Has it crossed the line? Hasn't it? Well, you won't find out for at least a few seconds 
whilst you wait for the referee to check his watch. Even so, for foot one, the free goal cushion restored, and this is this is a statement to Chelsea here. Right next up, Fulham away at Craven Cottage as we travel to West London in our final game before the FA Cup semi-final. Back in a European place, we're going to stay there. We need to keep on winning, can we, Cherries? Of course, something I also haven't mentioned, but by winning the FA Cup, you do qualify for a European competition as well. That's the Europa League, of course. Sorry. Uh, these building works, man, seriously. It's, it's literally been about three weeks now. I, 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 I think they're just going to continue indefinitely. <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. I know it's not great. Um, but yeah, uh, the, the, the winners of the FA Cup, of course, qualify for the Europa League as Dominic Salanke fires in an early opener. So if we don't make the top seven where we are right now, we can still qualify for next year's Europa League by winning the FA Cup. So it's a double kind of incentive, if you will, not only to win Bournemouth for their first ever major honour, but also to get them into Europe that way as well. 18 and 32, and I'll say this, if we're not in Europe next season, I'm sorry, but how, how would Dominic Solanke stay here at Bournemouth? Second year in a row where he's been absolutely phenomenal. I've been checking right move frequently <laughs> over the past few months. Just thinking, like, how how could I do it? Like, where, if, if I was to buy a house, where could I maybe get a place? I don't know if I'd ever be able to afford one, to be honest. Um, I'm quite good at saving money, but house prices in the UK have just risen to a ridiculous amount. And the annoying thing is, like, when I do, like, a, um, a mortgage calculator kind of thing, I'm like... Well, I'm paying more than that in my monthly rent right now because, as we know, rent in the UK has gotten ridiculous, particularly where I'm based right now, which is around Manchester. Uh, so I'm like, why? How? Like, you know, like, well, guys, I can't get a mortgage even though the mortgage payment is less than my current rent. It's oh, it's so frustrating because I'd love to have a dream of owning my own home one day, but I'd also love to have a dream of winning Bournemouth their first major honour this season in the save. And maybe, just maybe, in this form we could do just that. It's a first in Bournemouth colours for a man who's made a massive difference is coming in. It's not Matthias Cunha, but it's his compatriot, Vinicius Salza. First goal since arriving from the Blades. He's made a massive difference to our back line. Cherries double up, who is first for the club. What I need to do is win the lottery, that's what I need. <laughs> maybe then I might be able to afford my own home. Um, I was chatting to one of my housemates about this recently. It's, it's like, it's almost like as a single person, it's a bit of a curse, <laughs> at least in this country, you know. Like, because uh, he, basically he was, uh, he was, he was thinking about buying a car. He has a license, but he doesn't own a car. He was thinking about buying a car. He was telling me about how the insurance would cost him a ridiculous amount of money per month. And he was saying there's, lo oh, there's loads of different factors as to why that is. And he said one of the reasons why is if you're single. Apparently if you're single, insurance costs more. It's like, being single is just an absolute curse, man, honestly. Absolute curse. Still 2-0 down, sorry, still 2 nil up here. And uh, it seems as though with Fulham struggling down the bottom of the table, it's going to be another game for them where they fail to try and claw out of the bottom three as Bournemouth are running, ah, oh, running rampant in London. And they should have gone 3 it up. Solanke denied by Andre Lunum. And it's still 2-0. But that third goal is coming. Fulham right now really, really struggling. Zavani shot. Oh, a little bit lucky, but we'll take it. No, Solanke, what a miss. And there we go. Back-to-back -back wins. And a clean sheet as well. As we're back in form and stay in the top seven. And now we'll head to Wembley. Looking to pull off the improbable. Come on, you cherries. And as we see, Noah Antoine is going to join from Minical in Portugal on a two-year loan in the summer. We'll keep our eyes on what goes on there. Uh, following game is the big one. FA Cup semi-final against Chelsea. I'd say whoever wins this goes on to win the whole thing, with the other semi being an all-challenging affair between Burnley and Watford. Uh, the Blues might be slight favourites, but I'd say based on league position, it's probably a dead even tie and could go either way at Wembley, especially with Poch's side already having one major on this year in the Carabao Cup. Uh, they're lining up in a 4-2-3. 3-1 with Sanchez between the sticks and about four is Trevor Shaloba, Fafana, Thiago Silva still going, the vet and Mark Ucarella and the DM duo is Romeo Lavia alongside Leon Goretzka. Uh, Zayek and Mudrik are on the wings and Nkunku supports Nicholas Jackson up top. Our third game and Bournemouth history, their first ever FA Cup semi-final but can they keep making history and make their first ever major cup final? Come on you cherries. 
Clark through the gap to Solanke. And he's done really well to hold that up there. As NATO finds Friendroop on the right. Nice build up this from the Cherries. Question is, can we find an opening? Oh, it's a wonderful build up! And Solanke! Fires in the opener, quickly turns to show respect. But the Bournemouth fans are in jubilation at Wembley. It's a wonderful team goal as well. And you very rarely see me put the finishing touch on a nice move, but this time we do. And it's unsurprising who does put the bow on the gift of the team move. Dominic Solanke, our top scorer with another. Cherries draw first blood at Wembley. Well, I did say... Chelsea probably are slight favourites for this, but it is worth pointing out they're just below us in the table by five points. They've already got a major honour, so maybe they'll have a little less motivation for this one. No, they're not going to win trophy list regardless. Oh, Acuna side that. We'll play advantage there, please, ref. Ah, oh, and Thiago Silva quarterback in prevents Solanke from surely going on to make it too. Excellent start here at Wembley, and I often say when you're the underdog, don't be phased. Don't sit back. Don't recede into yourself. Go out and be assertive in the early stages. Let the favourites know you're here. You're here for a scrap. And that's exactly what we've, uh, we've shown thus far. 29 minutes in, still leading by one. But at the moment, looking good value for it too. Half an hour ago, and I have to say, at the moment, we're looking full value for this one goal lead. Chelsea have not had an answer for our back four. Vinicius, once again, has just been amazing, honestly. And, you know, if I was if I was doing the signing of the season awards that I used to do, I'm thinking about bringing this back. For those that have been following me for a while, you'll remember I used to do, like, a signing of the season, player of the season, young player of the season, goal of the season award at the end of the uh, of these seasons in my career. Modes. I'm thinking about bringing that back for my next save onwards. Uh, Vinicius would get it. As good as Cunha's been... Vinicius has just been a brick all season long. But there is NATO! To double Bournemouth's lead and surely send them to their first ever major cup final. He might not win signing of the season himself. I don't think there's any chance of him doing that. But he has just come up with the goal to surely set us Back to Wembley next month. Pedro Nato smacks in the second. Book your ticket for London once again. We're heading back next month. Oh, Gary Neville's got his laptop out. He's, uh, he's ready to send that tweet. He's had it in his drafts for a long time. Billion pound bottle jobs blowing again at Wembley. But I'm going to say, Gary, just like with Liverpool in the EFL Cup final last month in real life, you're not giving the winning team the credit. Because Liverpool's youngsters deserved it, as the Bournemouth boys at Wembley as well. We might be slight underdogs, but in the end we deliver on the day. A goal and an assist for Solanke as he scores the open and sets up the second. Bournemouth are through to the FA Cup final for the first time in club history. And will for sure, whoever they face, be favourites to win the whole thing. What a performance. And I actually think we're going to see directly after the game the conclusion of the other semi-final because for some reason uh, it gets played on the same day as Burnley ran out comfortable winners over the Hornets in the end 4-1 and it's like how how has that happened like how have both games been played on a Saturday what was it back to back how do we get 90,000 <laughs> Chelsea and Bournemouth fans out of the stadium and bring in the Watford and Burnley fans in half an hour for the following game. I don't know I don't know why that happened. That never used to happen. It used to be on different days, but now for some reason EA have them played on the same day. But it's Burnley. It's Burnley in the final, who I would say would have been the tougher of the two championship sides. But it will be Vincent Company's Claret, who, to be fair, have got a side that's good enough for the Premier League. We'll take them on at Wembley in the FA Cup final. But before we get to that FA Cup final, we've still got a job to do. Entering the final games of the Premier League, where we could still technically finish in a Champions League spot. But if we are going to do that, we need to win the majority of our remaining fixtures, including this one, Crystal Palace away at Selhurst Park. Come on, you cherries. So this is a uh, an interesting question here. But if you're a fan of a team that have never played Champions League football and never won a major honour, uh, there, there, there'll, there'll, there'll be many of them out there, including my team, Millwall, and the team we're using, Bournemouth, here. What would you consider a better achievement and what would you prefer? Qualifying for the Champions League or winning an FA Cup? That's a tough one, isn't it? 
That's a really tough one. You think about all the money that playing in the Champions League, from the group stage onwards that a top four place would give you in the Premier League, uh, the money you receive for that is just ast literally astronomical. It really, really is. It's why Rangers uh, were so hopeful of getting to the CL uh, when they had that run in the Europa League as well, able to win the, uh, the trophy. Of course, count short in the final on spot kicks. Um, you know, the money is massive, absolutely massive. And again, it means you get a chance to play against the best teams in the world in European football as well. What a ball, Philip Billing, but NATO couldn't pull the trigger. But then winning the FA Cup, first ever major honour in club history. History made by winning that trophy. Um, you know, and, and, and names edged in folklore. What, what would be considered the greater honour? What would be considered the better of the two choices? You can only do one. Qualify for the Champions League, you get one season and probably one season only of Champions League football, or you get that FA Cup, that major honour. That, as a Millwall fan, I'll tell you what, I don't know what I would choose. I really don't. Genuinely, really don't. That's such a tough call, man. We've never won a major honour. We got to the FA Cup final back in 2004. Uh, Tim Cahill's goal in the semi um, is one of my all-time favourite Millwall goals for the significance of it, of course. Um... But we, we, we got beat in the final 3 you know, 0. For those that are too young, I might have even been born back then, back in 2004. We, we played Manchester United in Cardiff. This was back when the, uh, the new Wembley was being built. It was Pedro Nato gets his second in two, finally coming alive late season. Uh, we got beat 3 0 uh, in Cardiff. We were always going to lose the final. Um, but that's the closest we've ever come. It would mean so much, you know, so much. I've never, you know, we, we, we've never won a major honour. To win that first in club history would be incredible. But you've got to think, again, the long-term benefits of qualifying the Champions League, all the money associated with it, and six games, even if you were knocked out in the group stage, six games of Champions League football, watching your team play those six games, man. Oh, it would be amazing. Three games at your stadium. Imagine three Champions League games at the Den. Oh my goodness gracious me! I tell you what, the uh, the big clubs. I don't know how lucky they are, honestly. Because if you put a gun to my head and say, "Doxy boy, we're going to give you one last wish, one last your desire, desire for uh, for your club, Champions League football, six games in the group before you and never to be knocked out, or an FA Cup with Millwall. What do you choose? I don't know. I'd have to say pull the trigger. And let another fan decide, because I can't, man. Oh, God. E Eve would be just incredible. And that is going to do it. And another huge win for Bournemouth. It's now four in a row and three clean sheets on the bounce as well as the Cherries coming to find form right when it matters most. Well, in the end, we might be able to get our cake and eat it too. Being very ambitious, but why not Champions League and an FA Cup as well? Because right now, we've definitely got a golden chance at doing both of those things. Buzzing for NATO as well. Finally starting to get some uh, some goals on the board too. And uh, right after the game, we do see uh, that Aubert is going to join Karlsruhe on a two-year loan when the summer arrives. So pleased to see that. And uh, three more scouting updates. But well, we've still got one month left in the mission. So I'm going to continue scouting on these four and see how... How they look after the final month and from Scotland wow Ben McKenzie looks as though he's going to have phenomenal potential but I'm just going to give him one more month and uh, see how he looks after the uh, the final one and from America we'll continue scouting on all these guys here for one more month just one more well Gabriel Jones does look pretty decent to be fair and we'll see how they look heading into the final month of scouting so yeah our academy looking like this as we close out season two i have a feeling that john anderson is going to ask for a uh for a pro deal at the end of the season being 18 and i think that sharp as well will probably ask for one too bit of a shame because they're two of our best young prospects but my fingers are crossed that no matter what lee Wynn will stay in the academy until the summer he'll get a, a pro deal in the summer no doubt for the new season and then we'll loan him out but for now I mean, I just keep shouting him out, man, because how can't I? 92 to 94 potential. If we get our strength to 70, as soon as it becomes 70, I'll take off the defensive wideback development plan. But right now, oh, the future at right back here with Bournemouth looks in safe hands for many years. Right, following game, Arsenal away in North London, looking to make it five straight wins for the Cherries. But of course, our last defeat came here in North London against Spurs. Massive game with both teams going for Champions League football as we take on Arsenal away. Come on, you Cherries. Second half, off and underway. Still tied at no, no, it's been a poor game so far. Not really anything to report as Timber is sent to the deck and the guns will win a free kick. This is, this is one of those games where it's just really scrappy, like very little fluidity to it. Stop, start, game stuck in the middle of the park. 
Not a classic, to say the very least. But I would still take a point if we can hold on to it. Martinelli, a great ball. Oh, he's, oh, I don't believe it. Gabriel Jesus has just completely got away with that. Scuffs the first time shot. Hits it straight into compatriot NATO. And what I have to say, it's from close proximity. So I don't think you can blame the goalkeeper. He completely mishit it. And thankfully, it drops straight back to him. Oh, it looks worse in slow motion, though, doesn't it? NATO, <laughs> that happens when you get a little bit older. It's hard to get off the floor quick enough. <laughs> Doesn't bounce back on time. And Arsenal's number nine gives the Gunners the lead. Well, I'm already thinking about summer transfer targets. I tend to do this around April, March, April, May time. Think about who I'm looking to bring in next season. I would say with Travers going to Leeds for six mil, we'll need a new goalkeeper anyway. Alvinato being downgraded in his mid-30s. Uh, I think for the captain, this will be his final year starting between the sticks on a regular basis. I wouldn't say he's dropped a clanger there, but he probably could have done better. Arsenal, lead him. And it's Gabriel Jesus who gets the first. Yeah, coming forward again here. Koke through the gap. And this time I certainly can't blame him. Surrender possession. Arsenal with a quick fire double. And that is probably going to do it. Bournemouth winning run ending after four. Courtesy of the ex-Manchester City forward. Tune it up. Game. Game surely done now. Massive dent in our hopes to qualify for the Champions League. Massive boost to Arsenal's hopes of that aim. Because of how tight it is as well in the league table right now. Positions could be separated on goal difference. So, uh, you know, when, when that's the case, what you can't do is capitulate and concede cheap ones as well. Kai Havertz, who had a, a tough start with Arsenal, but has definitely turned it around and out about it. I'm pleased to see it has made it free in that. Is going to compile the misery. A 3-0 loss in Arsenal. And I can't stand coming to North London. Both of our last two defeats have came against Spurs and Arsenal. Get me out of the capital and bring me back to Dorset. But instead, we'll be staying in the capital for our fifth game in a row. As we take on West Ham at the appropriately named London Stadium. They just below us on the table and trying to keep an outside shot of European football alive. Us trying to keep them at bay. And keep our slim dreams of Champions League football still on the horizon. Need to bounce back though if we're going to do that. Following game. West Ham away. Come on, you Charis. Suchak. Sukudus. And five minutes for the break in a tense first start. Best way of putting it, really. With both teams having so much at stake. That often is the way. Great save by NATO. And saying there's life in those old bones. Yeah, excellent stop by the skipper as we're still tied at 0 0. And on the back of that loss to Arsenal, what we can't afford to do is lose again. A draw here against an informed West Ham side, I will take. What we can't do is lose. If we've got to grind out a 0 0, so be it. This game is still going on. It's the final chance as Vinicius heads it away. And that will do a bit of a bit of scrappy game, all things considered. Not many chances other than one before the break. But I said it at the conclusion of the first half. We can grind out a 0-0. We'll take it. It keeps West Ham below us. That's a good point for us. Sometimes you need to know when a draw away is a decent point. This one definitely is. And as that was our final away day of the season, we'll end with our final three games being at home. Thank God for that. Following clash, Everton, as we end to get back to winning ways here, we're a win for them will guarantee their safety but a win for us will keep us in contention for a Champions League place. We're going to do it now. I think we need to win all of our final three games of the season. Let's play two of the final three. Come on you cherries. Yeah, one point taken from six but could be a, a crucial point there against West Ham. We're still just above them and Oh, surely Oh, Jack Clark just can't buy a goal at the moment, man. It's been so long since he last hit the target, or I should say hit the back of the net. Still 0-0, but I, I, I think we've got a good chance of winning our final three. I really do. And that might be enough to put us in the Champions League. We start off a win here, get the ball rolling early. Then I think we could do it. But if we don't win this game, I'm not sure we will. Once again, this has been a very tough game. We have 24 minutes to go. I need to concentrate here because there's a good chance we can... Find the opening. Oh, Billing stumbling. Just couldn't keep his foot in. Still 0 0. And Everton just like looking to grind out a point that will probably really keep him in the league. A draw for there will be enough. But we need to win. Cunha, what a save, Virginia. Joe, Virginia, what a stop that is. And it might be the stop that keeps Everton in the Premier League. Well, Everton, no. This point has probably kept them in the Premier League. But for Bournemouth, no wins in three. Back-to-back -back goalless draws, no goals in three. And two points taken from nine. 
it's still been a great season, man, how you look at it. But we're coming up short and running out of steam right when it matters most. And we'll get out to the main menu because we should see the results there. Liverpool winning, Manchester United and Arsenal play each other. And that was a goalless draw, to be fair. Newcastle beat Aston Villa 3-0. I, I don't think we're going to do it now. There's two games to go. We're still above West Ham by three points. I don't think we're going to miss out of top seven. And that guarantees European football regardless. But... I don't think it's going to happen now, especially with Manchester United having a game in hand. Seven points behind. Yes, we've got a game in hand on Arsenal, but fifth, sixth and seventh, definitely still possible. But top four now, I think, is gone. Oh, no, no, no. Please don't be win. Please don't be win. Please don't be win. It's not win. Thank goodness for that. But five of our youth players on sale. Charles Alexander's the lowest rated, isn't he? Sorry, bro, but Lee Wynn is just too much better. You're never going to get a game, mate. Um, who who were the other four? We've got Tom Payne. That's the Welsh center half. Hugo Gillet. Uh, and I'm not sure who the others were. Gillet looks sublime, as does Tom Payne as a young center half. And who, who, who were the other two? Payne, Gillet. Oh, George Sharp and John, oh, John Anderson, who's that really good Scott as well. That's a shame, that. But he is 18, to be fair, as is Sharp. Well, that makes sense. But we'll, we'll add them all to the loan list and try and get them out for the uh, for the new season. Right, uh, let's do one more game today. Our final one, penultimate game of the season. Leeds at home, where we know top four has all but gone. We need a miracle. Actually, no, it has gone now. We're seven beyond two games to go. We can't catch up. But we can cement a top seven place with four points taken from six. Get our first win here on the back of none in three. And I'll all but confirm... Uh, European football of at least some kind, even though it won't be Champions League football. Let's close out today's episode of a win. Come on, you cherries. Come on, Bournemouth. Might not be able to make top four now, but a win here does guarantee Europa Conference League football, so European football of some sort. And don't get me wrong, we're massive favourites against Burnley, and if we win that FA Cup final, that will... Uh, that will guarantee European football as well. But it will take the pressure off for it, knowing at least... Oh, Solanke. At least we know European football is in the bag. And then we can play that final without that added pressure as well. Even so, still 0-0. Come on, man. No, no goals in three. Got, got to hit the back of the net in this one. And got to get a win in this one. Ritter trying to get around his man. Finds Joel Perot. Oh, and he squeezed it past NATO. Question marks once again. Over our Brazilian veteran, who I think probably could have done better with that one. And Leeds go a goal like, well, listen, we might be firm favourites in that FA Cup final, but based on this form, well, Burnley will be licking their lips and saying, these guys? Really? I think we can turn them over. Dear, oh dear. Right now, cannot buy a win. And this, ugh, Ch Champions League football's been blown. European football altogether might be completely bottled. Oh, second half to play, so plenty of time to turn this game on its head. Um... Just ask Rob Edwards about second halves against Bournemouth. Just got to make sure we uh, we don't capitulate. Because I think we'll get at least one good chance. If we get it, we got to take it. Oh, Pedro Nato denied by Melier, who we know is uh, is going to be competing with Mark Travers, our goalkeeper next season for starting that Leeds goal. Just pulled off a great save there. Oh, that's a good deflection. And he is going to be a, a target of mine to replace the senior. And this, you could say, is his audition game. Great save there. Still 0-0. No -no. Oh, sorry, still 1-0. No. As we uh, we push for a leveller. Oh, my goodness. This has been poor. Really poor. And this could and should be two. And it's not. NATO with the save. Kept in play by Vinicius. Oh, my goodness. That's not NATO's fault. It's mine. Leeds. 2-0 winners in Dorset. And I've just gifted them a second. Well, we've got the FA Cup final against Burnley. And we're firm favourites for it. But based on this form, no wins in four. Two points taken for a possible 12. And no goals in four either. Let's just say if there was ever a time for a massive cup final cup set akin to Wigan beating Man City all those years ago. It's right now. Burnley looking at this and licking their lips. Absolutely diabolical from the Cherries. When it rains, it pours. My word. And that will do it for today's episode of the Realistic Krimmer, guys. So big fan of you for watching. Really hope you have enjoyed it. And if you have enjoyed today's episode, then please do drop a like. Uh, much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. I will return with the season finale. We'll play the final day at home tonight in the Forest. Where, to be fair, a win will guarantee at least Conference League football and possibly sixth place as well if Spurs fail to match our result at Old Trafford. And, of course, we'll have the FA Cup final against Championship side Burnley going for Bournemouth's first ever major honour. Surely I can't bottle that as well, can I? Have a great day, guys. Much love to you all, and I'll see you for the season finale very soon.